Greetings, Shabbat Shalom, here we are again, a wonderful Shabbat time to gather together, Mishpaka. want to thank you for all the viewers and all the listeners, and of course, uh, you might see different surroundings because we're not back at house to house, we're mobile, we're, been, we're tent dwellers, so the wind done blew us up to Sacramento, up in the northern uh, California area. And we're about to go to Alma West Fest tomorrow, the 7th of October. We, if you remember, some of you that were watching or whatever, listening, but uh, we offered uh, three tickets and uh, a family did order three tickets and they got their three tickets and they needed one more. So it was a wonderful thing to uh, have the hand of the Father move on behalf of the Alma West Fest. This is uh, Vince Aramino, a, a friend of ours, my wife and I, who uh, at one time was involved with my daughter, and then she passed, and so he needed to fulfill all righteousness and uh, go before the Father, lie, lie before him, weep before him, groan and moan before him and ask him to move in his life and he has to the point that he's one of the key figures for Alma West Fest. With all that done and said, I want to thank you again for watching and let's have a word of uh, prayer. Father, we thank you for your hand upon us. We thank you that your continence continues, shines upon us. We thank you that your love and mercy and kindness uh, embraces us and lifts us up and you remove all the sense of sin and iniquity from us and you scatter it that it will not bother, it will not uh, take anything uh, from us or add anything to us. It's just part of your nature, your, your uh, character and function. So we want to thank you again, Father, for this tremendous time for uh, me, Josh, and Virginia being up here at Alma West Fest and uh, we'll uh, have... You know, and please remember, we're going to be shooting uh, little, you know, little moments here and there of the uh, festival, and you'll get to hear and see some of the things. But because this is our first time, give us some leverage, give us some, uh, you know, esteem and some mercy as we endeavor to go through, and then we got to, you know, uh, splice it, go through the the different uh, techniques. And formulas that uh, Josh has learned but I thought it would be neat for us to come up here um, and uh, get involved and so here we are live you know we're uh, doing the stream today 
so that all of you can be connected with us while we're here at Alma Fest or Alma West Fest, okay? Today's scripture, I want to tie in uh, First Chronicles 12, verse 32, the children of Issachar. I think that'd be a good name. Uh, we traveled to meet the children of Issachar. We've traveled to meet the children of Issachar. Do you know that Issachar in the scripture, when you break it down in the Hebrew, means the black African race, the Spanish race, and the Native American race. So you have three cultures in the tribe of Issachar. And of course, Zebulun and a few of the other tribes, uh, they hung around with each other. But let me read verse 32 of First Chronicles 12. And the children of Is Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do. The heads of them were 200, and all their brethren were at their commandment. And Zebulun, such as, went forth to battle, expert in war with all instruments of war, 50,000 which could keep rank. They were not all double-hearted. In other words, they had one vision, one heart. Echad. Echad. Like uh, in uh, Shema Israel. Eliheinu Yahuwah Echad. He is one. And that's what they were saying. And so now uh, uh, Issachar and Zebulun, they hook up and they have become one. They don't have a double heart. They have a single heart because they're after the focus and the vision of what the Father has laid in them. Amen. And then, of course, uh, in the book of Hosea, if you guys jump over there, in the book of Hosea, you remember, my people perish for what? For lack of knowledge, for lack of knowledge, for lack of knowledge. And uh, in uh, verse 4, I mean, chapter 4 of Hosea, verse 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy Yah, I will also forget thy children. That's a stout <laughs> scripture, that's saying something. He's saying, I'm not going to deal with your family anymore as you have not dealt because you uh, refuse to learn. And it says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So he's saying to them, listen, you guys are priests, but you're not unto me because you lack the knowledge and you're acting uh, squirrely. And so there's a lot of things going on right now that we have to pay attention to, okay? Job chapter 2, there's another verse there. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm, an alarm in my holy mountain, let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of Yahuwah cometh, for it is nigh even at hand. A darkness uh, and a gloominess, a day of cold clouds and a day of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong there has not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even in the years of many generations. And then you skip down and you read verse 9. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run up and down the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw from shining, and the Yahuwah and the Elohim shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. Sounds pretty good. Uh, sounds like our terabytes. Uh, his word. Uh, utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of Yahuwah is great and very terrible, and who can abide in it? Okay, verse 12, therefore also now, 
Hmm. Therefore, therefore also now saith Yahuwah, turn ye even to me with all your heart, with all fasting and with all weeping and with mourning. Rend your heart, not your garments. Rend your heart, not your garment. And therefore unto the, well, the Yahuwah, your God, for he has gracious and mercifully slow to anger and of great kindness and repenteth him of all evil. Who knoweth it, or who knoweth if he will not and repent, will not, ooh, and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a think drink offering unto the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, and call a solemn assembly. These are some powerful verses right now. And everything that you're about to see in the coming weeks as we have, I'm going to have Josh shoot some uh, segments here of the Alma West Fest. I'm believing that the Father's gathering uh, the whole tribe of Israel, not here in one locale, but in many locales on, on planet Earth. And the reason why he's doing it, because we understand the times. And what's interesting, when you understand the times, you see that it's not always biblically correct. But what I'm trying to convey to you as in Chronicles is bi biblically, it is biblically correct, but it's also uh, doing one of the things that uh, all of you respond to, Scripture. All the scriptures that I read from uh, Chronicles to Hosea and uh, on and on and Joel, they all respond and they are words of filled, faith filled words, words of faith, faith filled words. Amen. And so, therefore, we got to entreat one another as we endure what the day is dawning with. Endure what the day is dawning with. The, the day is bringing a whole lot of things to the table. And so let's look at a couple of scriptures in the New Testament where we can clarify what we're saying uh, from the Old. Amen. In uh, Luke chapter 12, let's see, where do we start? Yeah, let's do that. Uh, verse 40. You fools did did not he that made that which is with which is without make that which is within also but rather give alms but rather give alms ye fools did not he that made that which is without make that which is within also but rather give alms of such things now see the alms is not just money the alms is giving your heart, rendering your heart and your mind because you can be entranced. You can be in such focus that you lose sight of what you're doing. So here he tries to bring him back into a place where he says, because, you know, I'm going to go up to the verse from where we needed to start, but I wanted to give you this in that order because you, you're going to see some. But rather give alms of such things as you have, and behold, all things are clean unto you. But woe unto you who? Pharisees. For you tithe mint and root and all manner of herbs and pass over judgment and, and the love of Yah. These ought ye... These ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. So one gives alms and he's cool. Pharisees come in and he, they want to go ahead and start tithing mint and root and all manners of herbs and, and pass judgment and everything. And then they walk away like they're cool. And, and watch what he says in verse 43. Woe unto you, Pharisees, for you love the uppermost seats in the synagogue and greeting in all the markets. What was he saying? He was saying, man, don't get caught up in greeting all those in the marketplace. Well, Josh and I and Virgie, we're going to be out there. I'm going to be pushing her in a wheelchair. We're going to be in the midst of all the people that have given alms to the Father. And some have given uh, tithes and offerings to the Father. Others have given what they uh, thought of being an alms or a tithe and an offering, you know, like mint and oranges i mean my mom used to put orange a fruit basket for the saints 
Anyway, I, I never saw them disappear, uh, but, you know, they did swear to it that they ate it. They were eaten by the uh, angels. But uh, here again, uh, we'll be going through the park uh, at uh, um, Gibson, Ranch. Gibson Ranch. Thank you. Gibson Ranch Park in uh, Alberta, which is, we've been advertising for it. And you guys, if you still come out, come look at, look us up, see if, and if we can help you to attend the meeting and come, sure enough, I know uh, uh, there's one family already ordered their three tickets and they had for an order for one more. So that's four that we were able to uh, minister to and they got a hold of the tickets. So let's give thanks to the Father for that one. Yeah, hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. Because, go ahead. Uh, I'd also like to say on this screen, you will see the Alma West Fest. Uh, it's uh, right there in Gibson Ranch Park in Alberta, California. Doors are open. You will see me, Dr. Robert Gonzalez, and Virginia Gonzalez uh, ministering to the people. So, you know, if you want to come say hi, uh, meet us in person. Hey, just to let you know, we're still human and we're still there. Yes. So, back to you, Dr. Gonzalez. Thank you. And, and so verse 43, Woe unto you, Pharisees, for you love the uppermost seats and the synagogues and greetings and in the markets. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are as graves which appear not, and men that walk over them are not aware of them. Then answered one of the lawyers and said unto him, Master, thus saying, Thou saying, Thou reproachest us also. And he said, Woe unto you also, you lawyers, for you have laid man with their burdens grievous to the bone, and you yourselves touch not the burden which one of yours with one of your fingers. Woe unto you, for <laughs> for you shall build the sepulchres of the prophets and of your fathers and kill them. Truly you bear witness that you also, or that you allow the deeds of your fathers, for they indeed killed them, and ye build their sepulchres. Therefore also said the wisdom of God, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they shall slay and persecute the others that the blood of all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation. My, my, my. From the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zechariah, which perishes between the altar and the temple, verily I say unto you, it shall be required of this generation. Woe unto you lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge, you enter not in yourself, and them that which cursed or enjoyed. Who? <laughs> wow. Woe unto you, lords, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye enter not in yourselves, and them that were entering in you hindered. Now that's pretty interesting because they knew about the key of knowledge. They, they were there when Yeshua came into the synagogue. Look at verse 51. From the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zechariah, which perishes between the altar and the temple. So if you understand the setup of the uh, brazen altar all the way to the temple, the outer court was the brazen altar and the brazen laver. The candlestick and the showbread and the altar of incense was where the temple was. But the temple's entrance was right at the veil where the Holy of Holies was so you can partake of the Ark of the Covenant. And that's where a lot of us see through these scriptures the way they indicate it. It's like we have knowledge of it. We peer into it and see it. And then we return and go back to the things that we always did or always knew. Instead of trying to lay hold of the promises of what the Father said. This weekend is a promise where he promised my daughter, Monique, and uh, Vince a time where they would come together and, and these things would come to pass. Well, they're here today. And uh, Virgie and I, Virginia and I, myself, we are representing Monique. We're, you know, we're just, it's, it's an amazing task to see all this come to pass. And he did it. 
Okay, let's work on this last two verses. And as he said these things unto them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to urge him vehemently and to provoke him to speak of many things, laying wait for him and seeking to catch something out of his mouth that they might accuse him. <laughs> I mean, talk about being critical and talking about the smooth of the hand. And they were doing that to try to catch Yeshua so when they brought him up in front of his peers, they could find some fault in him. And look, uh, reading it again, verse 54, laying wait for him and seeking to catch something out of his mouth that they might accuse him. Chapter 12, in the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of, of people, inasmuch that they tore one upon another, he began to say, wow, wow, let me, wow, <laughs> beware <laughs> Okay, now now leaven is something that grows, but there's a principle in screw. It's not here, but I, I, we're going to get into something else. Okay, I'll just let it rest there. We, we, we'll continue on that. But laying wait for him and seeking to catch, him, catch something out of his mouth that they might accuse him. Verse 53, and, and as he said these things unto them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to urge him vehemently, and to provoke him to speak of many things. What were they trying to get him to do? To criticize, back talk, talk smack, talk about something, talk about an event that should have been done and wasn't done. All these things, there's always those that want to get on the bandwagon when everything's going good and, and, and they look at them and go, yeah, I helped, yeah, it's me. And, and so we, there's a tendency there of becoming like a Pharisee and we, and we can't go there. Because you are not a Pharisee, but you can act like one. That's where our old sayings came. Man, you're you're religious, brother. Well, they took the they took the scripture to where what was written didn't matter. It's the spoken word. It's not what I'm reading. It's what I'm saying. Do as I say. Don't. <laughs> oh my. And so here here again are, are things that we practice. And I'd like to once again remind you, this is uh, Shabbat Shalom, Saturday uh, the, se the 6th, tomorrow's the 7th, and Alma West Fest will start off early this evening. And we're meeting people left and right, and, and uh, it just brings me great joy to see that we're involved here. Um, Josh and myself in Virginia uh, we're praying for all of you, and we continue to pray his peace over you and that you may continue to prosper and go forward in all that you put your hands to work. Amen? In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, don't you forget to hit your subscribe button, call a friend, take notes, and let them know you watched House to House Discipleship Institute. Amen? Until we see each other again, Shabbat Shalom.
Yahoo. 